the idea is Allah is saying there's a very limited chance, very limited time for you to get a great deal out of. That same time that is the ultimate loss is actually the ultimate treasure also. It is the ultimate gift Allah has given us. It's the time on this earth. And so with that in mind, when you look at the next statement, you have to look at it almost in the shade of Asr. You can't look at inna al-insana lafi khusr on its own, which is translated roughly, no doubt, every human being is drowning in loss. You can't look at that statement on its own. It's actually in the shade of, I swear, by time that's running out. Human beings find themselves in any variety of circumstances. But the statement that Allah has made is that every one of us is in loss. Doesn't matter what state we're in, we're in loss. How is, that's the common denominator between all of us. Whether the one who looks apparently happy or healthy or wealthy or prosperous or the one who looks miserable, it doesn't matter. Allah has made a unanimous declaration. All of you are losing. All of you are actually not just losing, you are in loss already. You're drowning in loss already. And that helps me appreciate what the previous ayah was. The biggest proof that all of us are in a continuous state of loss is time itself. Because that's one thing you and I can never gain more of. That is one thing we're always going to be losing. Today will never come back. Maghrib will never come back. The moments that we've passed away, hayatuka and fas, your life is nothing but inhales and exhales, that's all they are. That inhale that went in and the exhale that went out is not coming back. These are moments of our life that have gone and will never return. It doesn't matter whether you're sick or healthy or poor or wealthy, what, what part of the world you live in, there is, there is one loss that is unavoidable and that is of time. And that loss, as days go by, is taking a toll on you. Slowly but surely, the decay and loss is the reality of the entire physical universe around us. As a matter of fact, the human body, we're constantly losing cells. We're constantly, dead skin is falling off, hair is falling off, whether we realize it or not. We're constantly losing physically also. Even Allah mentions not only a reference to what happens in the, uh, in the grave, قَدْ عَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْهُمْ وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حَفِيظٌ We already know what the earth keeps taking away from them. And we have a book that guards everything. Even though you're being decayed away, even as you're alive, there's decay happening. But even as you, after you die, your body's going through decay inside the grave. And Allah says, regardless, what needed to be preserved will always stay preserved. وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حَفِيظٌ but this is the notion of loss that I wanted to start off with, that time is the ultimate loss that cannot be escaped for, for, for any of us. Now I want to talk to you about the, the, the word choice for loss in this ayah, and that's the word khusr. It's a common word in the Qur'an, it's used many, many times, it's used to describe, for example, al-khasirun, the losers, ulaika humul khasirun, occurs in the Qur'an, uh, you know, alladhina khasiru, those who, those who lost. Khasirul dunya wal akhirah, Quran says, they lost this life and in the next, they lost both. So the common word actually in the Quran for loss is this word, or, or the origin of this word, khusr. Um, as for the word loss itself, not as verbs and other forms, the verb, the, the noun itself, khusr, is used in three forms in the Quran. You find khusr and you find khasara. وَلَمْ يَزِدْهُ مَالُهُ وَوَلَدُهُ إِلَّا خَسَارًا Or you find خُسْرَان خَسِرَ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْخُسْرَانُ الْمُبِينَ So you find three versions of the word loss and there's subtle differences between them. خُسْرَان is used for the worst possible loss, that's المبالغة, that's not used here. The خَسَارَة is used when you're already in a state of loss and it gets worse. That's why typically it comes with ziyada in the Qur'an. لَمْ يَزِدْهُ مَالُهُ وَوَلَدُهُ إِلَّا Khasara. They were already losing and then more loss on top of the loss they already had. Things got even worse. That's khasar. That's, we don't recite innal insana lafi khusran, nor do we recite innal insana lafi khasar. We recite innal insana lafi khusr. The word khusr is the base notion of loss. And what Allah is saying is, by using that word, that there are degrees of loss. That there are, some people are losing a lot, some people are losing a little. Some people are losing insignificant amounts. Some people are losing terrible amounts. And by the way, just to put things in relative order, like, you know, somebody who 
you know, le- uh, loses a dollar and is a millionaire, may not, oh, was that mine? Oh, I didn't really realize. And it's not a big deal for them. But somebody else who has barely any money loses one dollar. And that's a huge deal for them. So it could look like the same loss, but it's not felt the same way. It's not felt by people the same way. There are degrees in which we feel or sense, feel the pinch of loss. Right? So Allah is making a comment that whoever you are, whether you realize it or not, at some level you are experiencing loss. Of course, the ultimate loss being time itself, but it's not limited to that. How do we know it's not limited to that? Well, we know that because Allah used the word khusrin. The in at the end, the tanween, creates ta'meem. All kinds of loss. It could mean great loss, and it can also mean all kinds of loss. First of all, human beings are in loss, implies also human beings are being cheated. Human beings are in a, in a, in a scam. <laughs> They're in a scam. They're being deceived. This is a notion described elsewhere in the Quran. That this is, O mal hayatu dunya illa mata'u al ghurur. Worldly life is nothing but means by which people get deceived. And part of the meaning of khusr is actually, you know, the, this idea of, of ghurur, of deception. So human beings are being cheated out of something. Human beings don't realize. They're, they've got blinders on. They think they're running after something that will give them success. Or think they're running away from some, some kind of loss. But actually they're running right towards it. They've been cheated all along. They haven't seen the truth for what it is. This is why that dua is so important. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa rzuqna tiba'ahu. O Allah, show us the truth as truth. And give us the ability to follow it. وَأَرِنَ الْبَاطِلَ بَاطِلًا وَزُقْنَ اجْتِنَابَهُ Give us the ability to see false as false. And enable us to stay away from it. Because sometimes false is so attractive, you can't help but be compelled towards it, drawn into it, pulled into its gravitational force, its field, and you and I just go into it blinded. And when someone tries to wake us up, we'd rather not. We, it's too uncomfortable a reality. In that case, one is deceiving themselves. One chooses to stay happy and deceive themselves. Also, uh, al-khasir is also used for someone who's lost their mind as a result of losing everything. So, in al-insan fi khusr is actually, in a, se- in a sense, human beings are indulged in insanity. Human beings are crazy. What are they doing? You know, like, you would think of someone running into a building on fire, what are you doing? You're crazy. That's the comment made by Allah, I swear by time, that's running out. If the human being runs, they tend to run towards the wrong thing, towards their own destruction. They're running towards their own bankruptcy. And this perhaps is also an illusory reference to Judgment Day. When people wake up on Judgment Day, they can't believe what's happening around them. And Allah says, وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَ وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَ You're going to see people, they look like they're drunk. They're not drunk at all. You know, they're just, they're going to, can't believe what's happening in front of them. And they look just tipsy. That, that's what they're going to look like. It actually, the overall meaning is when you are losing something continuously, bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. That's actually called khusr. Which reminds me of the essential meaning of asr. When something is squeezed away drip by drip by drip by drip by drip. It's actually a similar meaning to that when loss is happening, but it's not all of loss all at once, but you're losing just a little bit at a time. I'm reminded of that experiment. Um, I think it was in psych class. I can't even remember what class it was. We, we saw this uh, experiment of a, of, a, of a frog thrown into boiling water. You know, it's, it's, it just jumps out right away or towards hot water, it jumps out right away. And then you have this frog who's just sitting in water, it's slowly being heated. And it's not jumping. It's just sitting there. And actually it gets to the point where it dies. But it doesn't jump. It didn't realize because the death to it was coming slowly. The slow poison got to it. If he saw the consequences of it all at once, he would have jumped. But no, human beings are just drowning more and more, deeper and deeper and deeper. Allah will give this energy, uh, this imagery in Surah An-Nur and describe a person drowning in the middle of an ocean and say, you know, um, لَمْ يَكَدْ يَرَهُ يَرَهَا 
he, he, a person was drowning in the ocean, it's so dark underneath at the bottom, he almost can't even see his own hand. Like that's the depth to which people can go into khusr. Now as far as, you know, old commentators, classical commentary like Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, they had lots of things to say about what this loss could mean. And I've kind of compiled all of them in one phrase for you. فَسَّرُوا uh, الْخُسْرِ بِالْحَلَكَةِ they, they interpreted that to mean human beings are headed towards destruction, not just loss. وَالْغَبَن which is loss itself. وَالْعُقُوبَة they're headed towards retribution from Allah. وَبِالنُّقْسِ الْمَادِّ and it also towards even material loss. Meaning human beings, whatever they do in this life, they can't gain, they can only lose. Believer, disbeliever, that doesn't matter. It's not even talking about heaven and hell. In this life itself, we can only lose. We can only lose our youth. So we, we can only experience loss because we ourselves are decaying and heading towards an end in this life. That's how Allah made us. كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ Allah actually says everyone on this earth was meant to be discontinued. Like, it's not a flaw of God that we get older and our skin gets wrinklier and our eyesight gets weaker and our back gets weak, you know. It's, that's not a flaw in our design. You would think, you know, when a watchmaker makes a really expensive Swiss watch or whatever, it's supposed to last forever. Why couldn't God just make us more durable? We could have just, you know, there's something wrong with this manufacturing. Actually, by design, Quran says, you were designed to deteriorate. وَمَن نُعَمِّرْهُ نُنَكِّسْهُ فِي الْخَلْقِ أَفَلَا يَعْقِلُونَ Whoever we, we give age to, we start reversing them in their creation. We start making them weaker and smaller like they were as kids. You know? I'm, I'm reminded of Alusi rahimahullah. So many years ago I read this. said, you know, when a child is small, they're always looking up, climbing up, reaching up. And a man gets old, his back bends, and he's always looking down, like, to his future home. SubhanAllah. And, you know, children, they keep us up late at night. They don't let us sleep. They cry, they get stomach aches, they want to drink or whatever. You know, or they cry because that's their power trip. Like, fake cry. You ever seen kids fake cry? <laughs> You're like, that's fake. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm still going to do it. But you get older and you can't sleep. And people can't sleep. They have a hard time. And this is perhaps Allah's way of letting them stay up for the night prayer. You're about to meet God. So He facilitates Qiyam. You don't have to take pills for that. You can just... And by the way, if you start making Qiyam, Shaitan's going to come put you to sleep anyway. So, <laughs> so take advantage. Anyhow, so... Overall, when you study loss in the Qur'an, وَسَائِرُ مَا فِي الْقُرْآنِ مِنَ التَّرْكِيبِ هُوَ بِمَعْنَى فَوْتُ مَا كَانَ يُمْكِنَ أَنْ يَفُوزَ بِهِ مِنْ ثَوَابٍ وَنَعِيمٍ لَوْ آمَنْ وَاتَّبَعْ Qur'an's commentary on loss is actually to miss out on opportunities that you could have taken advantage of. That's how Allah describes loss. Loss is not about money. Loss is not about, you know, material anything. Loss is not about loss of loved ones. Loss is actually in the Qur'an about opportunity missed. That's all. That you, had you truly believed, and had you followed the right guidelines, you could have availed from that opportunity. Okay. Uh, Imam Habib al Farahi talking about this loss, he says something really beautiful. كَانَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنْ يَتَنَافَسُوا فِي مَا هُوَ أَحَقُّ بِهِ it's as if Allah is commenting on the tragedy of human history saying these people should have been competing with one another in things that are far more worthy of competing in. Far more worthy of competition. What were you competing with other, other people in? Looks? Money? Showing something off? What was that worth? And it was incumbent on people to wake up from their sleep of being distracted all the time, and their sleep of being entertained all the time, and remaining heedless and asleep to reality, before all is lost, and the only thing left alive is regret. كَمَا بَيَّنَ لَنَا فِي قَوْلِهِ حَتَّى إِذَا جَاءَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْأَحَدُهُمُ الْمَوْتِ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ رَبِّ الْجِعُونَ Like Allah Himself says, when the time, the moment comes when death arrives, 
Then he calls out, God, my master, just send me back. I'll, I'm gonna change. I got it. I got it. I know my time's up. Just give me a little bit extra overtime. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be different this time. That's, that's the only thing that's gonna be left is regret. Because you realize you didn't do anything with the time you did have. May Allah not make us from those people. In his commentary, just a summarization also, he uses time, meaning, وَالْعَصْرِ إِلَّا الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ This statement, he uses it to remind us of perished nations. You know, Asr is the time that passed away on very powerful nations. Who used to say, Allah even describes them, أَوَلَمْ تَكُونُوا أَقْسَمْتُمْ, أقسمتم مِنْ قَبْلُوا مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ زَوَالٍ Aren't you the same people who used to swear back in the day, there, will, there shall be no downfall or on our civilizations? Have you ever wondered, like people go, you know, ancient Roman ruins or Egyptian ruins, right? Or we go to like these, these, these palaces and we take pictures next to them, these monuments around the world. We take pictures next to them, in grave sites, etc. But what we're looking at are not just, you know, it's one thing to visit the grave of a dead person. These monuments are actually the graves of dead nations. That's what they are. And we look at them like, that's pretty cool, I took a picture next to this, you know, the pyramid or that. But that's actually, that's a graveyard of very powerful nations who at one point believed there shall be no downfall for them. We're number one, number one forever, baby. That's what they believed, that's what they held. They prided themselves in it. And Allah says, time came and ripped all of that to shreds and look at where they are now. They're just part of your selfie. That's all they are now. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ And he use, and uses this, the very same statement to remind us, by looking at that history, you're still around, you better not join them. You better not become like them. Meaning, learn from history and, and get your act together. Ash-Shawkani rahimahullah, talking about this ayah, he says, أَقْسَمَ بِالدَّهَبْ لِشْتِمَالِهِ عَلَى الْعَجَائِبِ وَالْعِبَرِ He says, by calling on, I swear by time, humanity is in loss, by swearing by time, what Allah has done is He's taken, He's made us look at all of history and all the strange events that have occurred and all the lessons that can possibly be drawn and we will come to this conclusion that Allah has come to. He's made us people that study and look at history. As if to say, the study of human history, not just Islamic history, the study of human history, whether it's European history, African history, whether it's you know ancient civilizational history, whatever history you study, when you are studying history, you're studying something Islamic. You're studying something that reinforces the truth in the insana, the fi khusr. Historians are very important people. History is critical. We are living in an age now when people have certain majors, we make fun of them. What are you studying? History? Oh, couldn't find a real major. <laughs> and it could have been an accountant at least could have done something else history who needs history and you'll find some of the most successful CEOs in some of the most successful and large corporations in the world are not business majors they're not tech majors they're not programmers they're people that studied art history anthropology psychology those are the people. The people who study the humanities, essentially. The Qur'an actually calls for an in-depth study of the humanities. It does. And it also calls for a study of the sciences, but it certainly does call for an in-depth study of the humanities. And that's why any, any young students that ever come to me and say, I want to do Islamic studies, what should I do? And I ask them how old they are, and they're like, I'm in college. I was like, finish college first. What should I study in college? Should I just do Arabic in college? No, no, don't do Arabic in college. Study psychology, study sociology, study anthropology, study history, study law, study one of the humanities, and then get into Islamic studies. You'll have a different point of view. You'll have a broader perspective. And that's needed. That's very much needed. You know, an entire generation of students of Islam that are Renaissance people that understand one of the one of the human sciences at the you know and they, they go in depth in that and they also study the Islamic sciences. And um, I have hopes in this generation. Any in any case. Uh, now inshallah we're gonna get to um, 
the final bit of inna insana lafi khusr i talked about the the means of emphasis that have been you know employed therein one last comment and that's the positive comment now i've given you enough negative is imam hamiduddin farahi actually argues because asr refers to time that's lost and the little bit time that's left he says actually this surah on at face value looks like it's pretty dull like it's it's pretty dark like human beings are in loss but he sees in the surah something he says and by saying that there's just such little time left allah is telling you that you can earn in that very little time an endless treasure and you can end in it uh, you can earn in it a kind of success that will never fail and if you don't take advantage of it then certainly you are you are at a loss the idea is allah is saying there's a very limited chance, very limited time for you to get a great deal out of. That same time that is the ultimate loss is actually the ultimate treasure also. It is the ultimate gift Allah has given us. It's the time on this earth.